Earlier in the scanning exercise, you learned about some general behavior of scanners. And we looked at some links to sites that share scanogram images. I'm going to show you how to set up your own scanogram now. First, we need to make sure you have access to a scanner. It doesn't matter the brand, although we are using an Epson scanner, and it doesn't matter the kind, though we are using a professional flatbed scanner. The only criteria is that you can scan a color image and meet our resolution and size requirements. Minimum 8.5 by 11 at 600 pixels per inch. Set the parameters for the scanning software to achieve this. If possible, set it to create a TIFF file. If you don't have a scanner, your options include 1. If you are close to our campus and taking a course, you can email and arrange a visit to use this scanner. 2. You can go into a library or computer lab at a campus and use the scanner. 3. You can find a friend who has one. If none of those are options, you can generate a scanogram style image using a phone, and we'll cover that emergency contingency at the end. So, assuming you have access to a scanner, acquire about a half dozen items that have personal significance to you. These items do not have to be flat. In fact, your results may be better if you avoid flat objects like printed material or ID cards. I might also be concerned that the scan of an ID could reveal personal information you'd rather keep private. Incidentally, many scanners have algorithms built in that prohibit the scanning of paper money. There are some tricks like moving the object around while the scanner is in motion that can distort the money image, or you might get away with foreign currency. I had an armed services veteran in class once who created a very provocative image with Iraqi paper money. But other than that, don't get excited about scanning a Benjamin. So I have here some odd materials. A toy train, a coffee cup, a raw egg, a glass vase, a piece of bubble wrap, along with a 3D print of a piglet and the ceramic cast it was digitized from. If I'm using some material that might make a mess of the scanner, let's say I'm scanning a sandwich or a damp washcloth, for example, I have some clear material like an acetate sheet or some simple plastic wrap from the kitchen, which happens to make a cool texture if you crinkle it. However, you can also tape it down if you want it to disappear. But back to the objects. The point is to be imaginative and personal with the objects you choose. We're going to arrange these objects in a manner that will transform them. Recall how you transformed simple letter forms into drawings in the Blackbird project? Our goal is to try and do this with our things. You can aim for an image that recasts a set of keys as arms on a robot, or a stuffed animal as a creepy head. Or you can go full tilt or non-objective expression, where the object is altogether unrecognizable. Remember that the scanner is looking up, so as you layer things on the scanner, the first things you put down are what is visible. Creating a scanogram is a bit like printmaking. You don't quite know what you'll get, and that's part of the fun. So here, I'm going to crack the raw egg into the glass vase and set that sideways on the scanner, being careful not to spill. Then I place the toy train along the bottom. I lay the big piglet next to in slightly under the vase, and the smaller piglet on the opposite side. I lay my coffee cup so the handle is inside the vase, creating some layering. Finally, I'll drape the bubble wrap over about half the image. As I compose right on the scanner bed, I'm paying attention to gestalt phenomena like figure and ground, and I'm also not afraid to let objects touch the edge of the scan, or even be cropped by it. I'm also doing a lot of layering here, and that can lead to interesting effects because the scanner has a very shallow depth of field. So some things will be a bit blurry as they lift off the bed an inch or more as they layer. You want to keep the lid open to achieve a dark or even black background. This will be useful later on. Also, 
I don't think the lid will really close on this pile of stuff. Turn off as many lights as you can, and darken the room as much as possible. A fully black room is best, but that might not be practical. Just do your best to darken things up. If push comes to shove, take a black or dark cloth and drape it completely over your setup. Now, do a test scan before you do a full scan. This preview allows you to make tweaks to your composition. I don't like the way my pig is being cropped in this test, so I move it and retest. Once I have a preview I like, I hit the scan button. The actual scan takes much longer than the preview. When the scan is done, open it up. I'm opening in Max Preview software quickly, and zoom way in. 600 ppi picks up a phenomenal amount of detail. Now, there are a couple of tricks you might experiment with. I mentioned moving objects while the scanner is operating, and I'll show you how. Hit the scan button and watch carefully as the scan bar moves. The scanner will only pick up motion right there at the scan bar, so if I move my object up here, it won't catch it. But if I move my object here, following the scan bar, really strange effects happen. The waving hand that is an icon for this exercise was created this way. Okay, so what if you don't have a scanner? You can still create a scanogram like image with a camera or phone that will work pretty well as a substitute. First get a piece of black cloth, even a dark colored article of clothing will do. Now we'll take our objects and arrange them on a table on this cloth. We have to place these items in the opposite order that we did for the scan. Where the scanner looks up, our camera will look down. Finally. Take your camera or phone and hold it level above the table. Organize the view so that nothing but the objects and the black cloth is seen. It doesn't have the strange flattening effect of the scanner, and you can't play tricks like distorting objects through moving, but you can still generate a pretty abstract image this way. Export your image out so you can get it to your laptop and turn it into a TIFF. Make sure it has enough information to create a minimum 8.5 by 11 at 600 ppi image by looking at the image size dialog box in Photoshop. So that's it. Save this original scanogram as a TIFF file named according to the conventions in New Media Wiki, and store this up in the cloud for the next step.